we can get started. So I think we'll start just introducing ourselves. I'm Michelle. I'm a senior in Wharton. Uh, I'm studying finance and social impact. Um, I'm involved in Wharton Ambassadors, which is the club that allows us to do these um, intro sessions, as well as Greek Life and Big Brothers Big Sisters, which is a nonprofit organization where I mentor a middle schooler now um, every week, which is awesome. Uh, so if, you, if anyone has any questions about any of that, feel free to ask. And if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, um, so I'm Emily. I'm just starting here. I'm a freshman. Um, I am a student in the Huntsman program, so I'm pursuing um, a degree in international studies in the college in addition to a degree from Wharton. I'm undecided on my concentration as of now. Um, outside of school, I'm in Wharton Ambassadors, what this is, um, Penn Surf Club, Wharton Women, Joseph Wharton Scholars, and also Greek Life. So if you have any questions about like different types of clubs or being a dual degree student, feel free to let me know. Awesome. And before we get started, we want to just clarify to you guys that we want this to be as helpful as possible for you. So if you guys have any questions at all, throw them in the chat. Um, we'll try to keep up and answer all of them. We'll also have some time at the end if you guys have any questions. Uh, but really, like, don't feel bad interrupting and throwing something in the chat. We'll try to answer everything while we're going. So just a quick overview of what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to talk about what business is, what Wharton sort of has to offer um, within the classroom and also extracurricularly, um, as well as obviously post-graduation um, things that occur. <laughs> Um, so when thinking about an undergraduate business school, there's it's really important to define, I guess, what business is because it truly is everything and is every aspect of life. So it's not just finance and consulting, but things like music and healthcare and movies. Um, but at Warren, you define business for yourself, um, picking what classes you want to take, what activities you participate in to really contribute to your overall degree here. Um, Warren has over 95,000 alumni worldwide in 153 countries, so there truly is such a vast global network that's unparalleled in reach and impact among business schools worldwide. And what Warren is sort of, um, their goal for their graduates is to give them a toolbox of skills that we can then reach into post-grad, no matter what we're doing, no matter what part of the world we end up in, or what industry we end up in, uh, just to sort of prepare us for anything, because obviously, I mean, as we learned this whole past year, um, uncertainty is prevalent and you never know what's going to happen. So they want to set us up with um, all the tools and skills that we need to face whatever happens post-grad. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the degree you're getting at Wharton. So it's really important to note that when you graduate, you'll be getting a Bachelor of Science in Applied Economics. So what this means is that you're going to learn all the theories behind business as you would in a Bachelor of Arts program. But at Wharton, we take it one step further and actually apply everything we learn in classes, like all the theories, and apply them to real world applications and cases and simulations. So you really get to apply what you're learning to the real life. Um, it's really cool because there's so many different great simulations. I know that there's one for entrepreneurship where you play the different roles um, of different um, roles, I guess, in different industries. Um, it's really important because I feel like from my personal experiences, I've just learned so much from actually doing and applying all of these theories I've learned in class to real life, making the information much more concrete and lasting in my memory. Yeah, definitely. The simulations are something that I've enjoyed throughout my four years. Um, it really just gives you sort of that hand-on experience and solidifies all the topics that you cover in the classroom, which is really cool. So a little history. Um, Wharton was actually founded in 1881 by Joseph Wharton. And a lot of people think that the graduate school was founded first. It was actually the undergraduate school. And that's sort of, he wanted to teach business as a science. So that's where we get the tradition of excellence sort of motto that we use. We have some of the top faculty um, in the world and some really cool centers and initiatives. Um, so it's not on this list, but one of my favorites is the Small Business Development Center. And what they do is they kind of, they pair college students with small businesses around the community that um, the students can help. So for example, we had a coffee shop on campus called Hubbub. Um, they used to go to basically every day. And 
Wharton students, help them with their supply chain management, how to find a great location to start the coffee shop, where, um, like, how to increase brand appeal. So it's just, it's a really cool opportunity. It's pretty insane to me that um, they're allowing college students to take such a role in these small business um, development type projects. And Hub of actually was super successful. And um, I personally didn't even know that the Small Business Development Center had anything to do with it until I was in Wham and I learned about it. I was like, oh, that's really cool because it's just like a normal coffee shop, like kind of like Starbucks. I don't know if, Emily, you have any experience with any other ones? Um, so far, not yet. One that I really want to get involved in is, I believe it's the Sports Business Analytics Center. So basically, one really cool example is a few years ago, a student got funding from the program, and essentially, he was able to use this funding to research like what the perfect NHL draft would look like. So he was able to analyze like who the good draft picks are, etc., and like how the team should spend their money, which is super cool. So really, there's a really great intersection of business analytics and sports, which you can do here at Wharton um, all on your own. Um, so here at Wharton, we have some of the most cited and published business faculty in the world. You may recognize a few um, on our slides. What's really awesome is that professors teach at all four levels, so you're learning the same information as company executives, MBA students, etc. Um, about 20% of classes, undergraduate classes, are cross-listed with MBA courses, which is really cool because you can be sitting next to someone in a class who's like several years older than you and I guess learn from your peers as they do have real world experience. Um, Michelle, I don't know if you have any experience with this, if you want to talk on that. Yeah, so actually my brother is currently doing his MBA um, here at Wharton and we are in a class together this semester, which no is way. <laughs> Yeah, um, but even... I mean, now it's a little tougher um, virtually, but in person, it was always like so cool to be able to sit next to an MBA student. And it's sort of, we'll talk more about um, like mentorship programs, but it's a really great informal mentorship uh, opportunity. Uh, I actually had a MBA student who I met my freshman year who helped me fit, like kind of navigate through like recruiting and stuff like that and sort of figure out what I wanted to do. So it is a really, really cool um, thing. At least in my opinion. Yeah, that's so awesome. I had no idea. Um, but what's really cool, actually, is if you get your undergrad um, degree at Warren, only about one third of grads go back to an MBA because they feel like they've had such a good knowledge and understanding of business. They don't feel like they need to go back to get their MBA. And those that do go back, either need it for a job promotion, their company's paying for it, or they're trying to change careers and industries. Um, another awesome thing is that no TAs actually teach lecture materials. A TA is either a postgrad student or an upperclassman, so you're always going to be learning new material directly from your professor. Um, TAs do teach recitation sections, which are essentially small breakout sessions just to practice um, problems within a smaller group setting. Um, one program that's really, really cool to get to know your professors better is called the Lunch and Learn program. So essentially, you can take a professor out to eat on Wharton's Dime to get to know them better and develop a more personal relationship. And there's so many great restaurants in Philly and so many great professors who are definitely going to want to try that one out. Um, on, our on our slide, you can see Vice Dean Diana Robertson, um, Adam Grant, Catherine Milcom, and Jeremy Siegel. You may recognize Jeremy Siegel from CNBC. Um, he teaches finance 101 in the day, and then his night job, he goes on to CNBC to give his opinion of the markets, which is super cool. Um, I'm looking forward to taking his class next semester. Another one is Adam Grant. He essentially created his idea of organizational effectiveness, which is actually its own concentration at Wharton. Um, he's written multiple best-selling books. One of them he co-wrote with Cheryl Sarenberg, who is the chief operating officer at Facebook. I actually got this book for my dad for his birthday, and he loved it, um, which is really cool. One of my friends took his class last semester, and she would go to his office hours just to talk to him about recruiting. Any, like, life questions I guess she had, he actually tweeted about her once, um, which is pretty cool. And on the first day of school, he writes his phone number on the, um, on the whiteboard. So you can text him, call him, FaceTime, whatever you're feeling, which is something that's really, really great here at Warren, there's so many wonderful professors outside of the four we have listed on the screen that really want to help you and see you succeed. Yeah, and I think something that we definitely uh, want to emphasize is how accessible these professors are. Siegel actually, Professor Siegel, um, holds open office hours, so any student can go and speak to him, uh, which is really awesome, and that's true of basically every professor, and all of them are involved in such cool research and 
um, like they're doing insane things out of the classroom and they're so willing to talk to you and sort of share their thoughts about X, Y, and Z. So um, that's one of my favorite things actually about Wharton is how accessible these professors are. So if you guys, unfortunately, you can't do the in-person campus tour, but if you were to, you would tour uh, Huntsman Building, which is our like main and newest Wharton building. And what you're sort of see is once you walk in, it's a bunch of classroom or I don't really know how to explain them like cubicles, I guess, but it's like glass rooms that have a big table in the middle. Um, and they're sort of like group study rooms um, that you can rent out for an hour and a half. In I mean, I guess the last three years, I would solely work in there. Uh, and it's really awesome because you get to work with friends if you have a group project or if you just want to hang out with friends while you do work. Um, they also have huge TVs in there, a camera, so they're great for interviews. I did a bunch of interviews in there. Um, and it's sort of Wharton's uh, way to like cultivate this collaborative culture. Um, and that's a really an amazing way to do it. There's also a uh, tangent hall, which I think opened, I'm pretty sure. It's basically our, it's like our innovation center. So if you have, if you're an entrepreneur or you want to start something or you have any type of idea, you can go here and they have um, like a virtual reality environment. They have a venture lab. They even have like a kitchen. So if you're trying to make a new food product or food packaging, uh, you can do it in there. It's sort of Wharton's way to keep up with the times and uh, really allow students to sort of like explore any interests that they may have. I walked by it the other day and it looks so cool. Can't wait to go in there before I graduate. Um, again, so touching on the simulations that Emily had previously spoken about, there's a couple are listed here. The customer centricity one is one that you do in your marketing 101 class. It's, I thought, one of my favorite ones because you basically take, you're given like a company and they're trying to get a product out to market and you are in charge of all of the marketing decisions. And so you're put into groups within the class and you're technically going against the other groups, but there's no like, you don't do better if you win. Uh, but it's really interesting because you can, you decide like who to speak to and what companies you um, decide how many like units to make in the first batch, how to um, like increase brand appeal. And you really see how each decision affects um, the product and the profitability, profit, profitability when we're in, I can barely pronounce the word, of it. Um, so that's a really cool example of it. The startup game, I haven't done it personally, but I, I think you, it's essentially, you start, um, like you start a company and you have to make all the decisions. And then the Wharton Media Network is uh, basically how we connect. Um, so we have a San Francisco campus and there's, uh, like we will video chat with them. I think they're the, our like technology hub technically. And then also every, you'd also see this on the tour, but every classroom has cameras in the front and on the sides. And basically every professor records lectures and posts them. So if you miss a lecture or what I would do is I would use it to study if, I, if I'm like confused about a topic, I like to rewatch the lectures. Obviously now on Zoom, everything's recorded, but in person. Um, so it was awesome, especially when I, was coming to college, I was a little concerned because I was like, what if I miss a class? I don't know how I'm going to get the notes, like whatever. And all of the teachers really, or professors really upload those and super, super helpful. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what the course structure would look like for a single district degree student. So it's really important to note is the 60-40 split of business to liberal arts courses. Um, what's really great is that you get a super broad learning experience and get to pursue all different interests through the liberal arts route while also being able to get a broad learning experience in business classes um, and then you'll get to further specialize into concentrations which we'll talk about a little bit later um, note that one CU is equal to one class so it's super manageable and you really get so much experience and so many different opportunities in different fields really to pursue what you're truly interested in And so these are um, the 11 business fundamental classes that you saw on the previous page. 
basically how these came to be was um, Wharton professors sat down and decided what does every Wharton grad need to know to be able to excel in anything that they do. So again, going back to that toolbox of skills and resources. And these are the 11 classes that they came up with. And I know it seems like a lot, but you can take them whenever you want. And I at least found them super helpful to sort of navigate and figure out what I wanted to do. So for example, I was sort of interested in finance. So I took finance 100 my freshman year and I loved it. I took accounting 100 and I didn't love it so much. So then I waited to take accounting 102 up uh, to my senior year. So it's really flexible and you um, can decide whatever to take them. And they're really great just to sort of figure out what you really want to do. Um, and these classes, so for a concentration, which we'll go into in the next slide, you base, these are the like core classes that you need to take. So for example, for fi my finance, con for every finance concentration, um, you have to take finance 100 and finance 101. And then it diverges from there to whatever class you want. But we'll talk about that more in the next slide. Really quick, I know we're throwing a lot of information at you guys. Are there any questions? Again, I can't see the chat, so Emma, I'm going to need you to go through yeah. those. Um, so our only question, we're just talking about the core requirements, which we just talked about um, in this slide. If there's any other questions, I'll keep an eye on the chat. Awesome. Cool. Okay, moving on. Um, so like Michelle mentioned earlier, we have 19 concentrations, which is essentially our form of the major within the Bachelor of Science and Economics degree, but really they're just four upper level courses. They're super easy to do, super flexible. You can even do more than one. Um, I'm currently undecided and I'm really not too stressed about figuring out what I want to do. I have plenty of time, um, super low key. Um, some of our most popular concentrations are finance, OID, marketing, management, um, business analytics. What's really cool actually is that business analytics is one of the newest concentrations. So like Michelle mentioned earlier, Wharton's always trying to cater towards new needs and what they see um, may be useful skills in the real business world. Um, as you can see in the slide, certain concentrations like management and OID have subtracts which let you specialize further into even more specialized areas, which is really awesome. So for example, if I were to do a management concentration, it could look completely different from what Michelle was doing in her management concentration. Um, there's normally about two required courses in one concentration, but the other two courses you can take are out of a list of about 15 to 20 classes, depending. Um, what's really cool, too, is if you don't see any of these concentrations or one of them really isn't sticking to you, you can actually make your own concentration. Um, what's really cool is one of the ambassadors who graduated last year actually did this. He was super good at dancing. He actually took a semester off to go dance on Broadway. He came back and created his own concentration called Dance Theater Management. Um, and then incorporated Wharton Management classes and the College of Arts and Sciences theater classes. So normally how this works is you present a plan of classes to your advisor. They work with you to make sure you're fulfilling all your requirements and then help you get your own concentration. So really Wharton's here to support you in any and all interests that you may have. Awesome. And there's two questions in the chat. So how common slash difficult is it to do two or more concentrations? So you can actually, there's a limit of two concentrations and it is super doable. Most of the people that I know um, do two concentrations, but also it's obviously not required. So whatever you feel that you can handle. What's awesome, like Emily mentioned, it's really just four classes for a concentration. It's usually two core classes and two upper level classes. So we're going to talk about this in the next slide, but you're usually taking about four to five classes a semester. So technically, you could do a full concentration in one semester. So definitely super common and not difficult at all. And then the second question is, is there a set time by when you choose your concentration, like by junior year? So there's actually no set time. Um, you don't. It's not like in the college, I think you have to declare by sophomore year. But since concentrations are so sort of flexible and easy, you technically don't have to declare until you're like senior fall but like your advisor might email you around junior year and be like what are you thinking just so you're not like jamming a whole concentration into your last year but I do I've like a bunch of my friends have switched concentrations in their last year or decided that they want to go a completely different route um so there's really very little pressure to sort of declare or have, feel like you have to stick to one once you do declare are there any other questions on this one? Awesome. Okay. 
So this is what a um, sample first year curriculum looks like. So um, as I mentioned, you're usually taking from four to five classes. Your fall, every freshman has to take Wharton 101. It's where it's really your only class with your cohort, which we'll also go into in a couple slides. But it's a really great opportunity to come in and meet people. And we'll talk about the leadership journey in the next slide. <laughs> uh, but that's what Wharton 101 is. And then Econ 10 is also um, a requirement that you have to take your freshman year. And then math or statistics and two to three other courses. So depending on your um, AP credits, you might be able to place out of math or stat or get a waiver. Um, and then those two to three other courses are really up to you to decide whatever you want to take. I took a witchcraft class my freshman year, which my parents were super ecstatic to hear about. And I think like psychology or something. And so it's sort of, it get, like Emily mentioned before, you really have that flexibility to explore whatever you want to do, whether it's witchcraft or maybe like computer science, who knows. Um, and then the spring is basically the same, you get one to two out of the courses, two required Wharton courses, if um, you have those left, or if you want to take a business fundamental, math and statistics, depending on um, whether you place out or not. So like Michelle mentioned, we're finally going to get to talking about the infamous leadership journey. Um, so this is a new leadership journey Wharton recently designed. Um, it's a four-year half credit for, um, I guess, journey. Um, it's not designed to be burdened at all, but rather help you develop your necessary skills that Wharton believes you need to have by the time you graduate. So all freshmen during your fall, you'll take Wharton 101, which I took last semester. Um, half of the class was spent learning about different departments. We had different lecturers come in every week and tell us a little bit more about their department to kind of help you figure out what you might want to concentrate in, maybe decide what core requirements you want to take earlier. So personally, I really loved the management um, lecture. So this semester, I'm actually taking a management course, and I really like it. So Wharton 101 was great in helping me figure that out. Um, and the other half of the class, you do um, it's a teamwork project. So my group was in my cohort. Um, and our client was Penn Leads the Vote, and our goal was to help increase graduate student voter turnout in the 2020 election, which was really cool. Um, so we worked with our client, and we helped them develop skills to increase the voter turnout. And it ended up increasing a lot, which was really awesome. So my first semester, I was thrown into this project with all of these people I never met before, and it was really great. I actually went to lunch recently with a few of them. Um, so it was really a great way to meet other students, especially um, in a pandemic time. Um, Wharton 201, which is what all sophomores take, helps you improve your presentation and communication skills. Um, Wharton 301 helps with your ability to work in teams, and your senior year is an integrative capstone, capstone class that incorporates all you've learned thus far in Wharton. Um, and this leadership journey is actually a new design based on student feedback and suggestions as a result of a previously different class being discontinued. So as you can see, there's a very common theory Theme. Warren is always trying to cater to student needs and what they think is our best for students um, post-graduation. I'll just add, so I technically finished the journey, um, and it's <laughs> honestly been, like, seriously so helpful. So sophomore year when we were developing our, like, writing skills and presentation skills, I always thought I was an okay writer, had never written in a business, like, environment before, though. So that was awesome because... I'm going into the financial world post-grad, so those are skills that were definitely so tangible, and also um, my presentation skills, I mean, I hope, <laughs> I think the same, but um, they've gotten a lot better. Junior year, also, like, teamwork, and you learn a lot about yourself in that class, and sort of what role you play within um, groups, and how to, um, I guess, sort of um, improve yourself. And then senior year, this capstone project, you get to decide, um, it's a, a course that you take, but you get to decide what you want to do. So since I'm, my second concentration is um, in social impact, I took the social impact capstone. And what was awesome is we got to design a nonprofit that we thought could be helpful. And um, we personally, we did it through the COVID lens just because of the time. Um, but it was really, really interesting, and we were able to present to the IMF and the, I want to say, the, someone in the UN, I'm not sure <laughs> quite who, I should probably have that um, down, but 
Uh, so it's really cool. And uh, it really felt like I was taking everything that I've learned throughout my four years and applying it. And it was awesome. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I know that there is a question in the chat. So how much interaction is there with students from other schools outside of Warren? Are dorms organized based on which school you're in? This is a really good question. So there's a ton of interaction. Um, Penn has a like one school sort of mentality where you can take classes in whatever school you want. So even if you're in Warren, you can take a nursing class, you can take an engineering class, you can take a class in the college. Um, and there's a lot of mix, uh, like most of, I would say at least now, most of my classes have a like at least a couple college students or nursing students or engineers um because a lot of and i mean i've taken nursing classes before i took an engineering class and definitely took a college class um and dorms are not organized based on which school you're in so my roommate freshman year was in the college um one of my best friends was in nursing she was in the quad with us so it's not at all organized that way so there you aren't sort of like pigeonholed into whatever school you're in. Yeah, Nicole, or sorry, Michelle totally nailed that one. What's also is really great is that there's something called program communities here. So if you do want to live with people who have similar interests to you, you can totally do that. So I'm actually in a program community dorm. So I live with everyone from the Huntsman program, um, which is a huge part of the program. We'll talk about that later. Um, but also there's on the, in the, Floor below me, it's all people who are super interested in STEM. I know that in the quad, there's women in infectious diseases. So really, there's so many different um, opportunities. If you want to really pursue an interest and be surrounded by that, you can. Um, if you want to live with a nursing student, an engineering student, that's also super available. Um, we have another question. Um, what part of your application do you think was most crucial, and how was your overall experience as a first-year student? Um, I guess I can take that one as a first year student. Um, I think in terms of my application, it was super, um, very much like me, I think is the best way to describe it. So as a lifelong surfer, I talked so much about my surfing experience. I talked about my school things. I talked about my friends, my family, um, also coupled with grades and SAT scores. It's honestly such a holistic process. I don't really think I could pinpoint one point as the most crucial because Wharton is looking for all different types of students from all different backgrounds. Um, as for my overall experience as a first year student, I'm having a wonderful time. Um, even in a pandemic year, I was telling my friends earlier this, I really could not think of it going any better than it is. I've met my best friends at Penn um, and it's really great. There's so many different ways to get out in Philly and do different things that are socially distant and COVID safe. So I really cannot say anything better. Um, Michelle, I don't know if you want to reflect on your experiences. They're probably a little bit different. I would echo basically what you said. Um, first year is so much fun. You're meeting so many new people. Um, I pers I lived in the quad. Are you in the quad, Emily? No, I'm in King's Court. Oh, right, 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 right. You had mentioned that. Um, so I lived in the quad, and you really it's just sort of like a blur of people constantly meeting. And um, also, like, Philly. So I'm from Connecticut originally. And I'm, like, from the suburbs, so being in a city was super exciting. Just being able to, like, walk downtown and, like, get a coffee, get lunch. Um, I Freshman year was probably one of my favorite years, although I love them all equally. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to cover some of the academic opportunities that Wharton offers. I'm not going to go through all of these, so if anyone has any specific questions on one, but... One of the really cool ones that I um, unfortunately haven't been able to try out, but a bunch of my friends have, is the Warren Industry Exploration Program. We call them Weep Trips. And the way that it works is you, um, during usually like fall break or in the spring, um, maybe during spring break, depending on where you're going, you um, go with a group of students to, there's different locations. So San Fran is tech, New York, I think is financial I'm not really sure um there's one in DC for like policy side of it and you get to meet with CEOs of insane companies so I know a friend of mine who went to the one in San Fran got to meet um was sitting I think with it wasn't Mark Zuckerberg but someone really high up in Facebook also like the CEO of Venmo um so it's a really great opportunity to 
be able to network with these incredibly intelligent and uh, successful individuals and sort of get their take on like what helped them the most in terms of like getting them where they were. Uh, so it's a really, really cool opportunity. Another, and then just to touch on research programs, there are tons and tons of research programs that Warren offers and Penn in general. Um, and these are really cool, especially because a lot of the times the professors that you're taking classes from are leading this in, like incredible top of the line research. So I've actually approached one of my professors my sophomore year and asked, do you need help with anything? I would love to help. And I was able to work on some of her research, which was so cool and so interesting, just sort of seeing like what goes on behind the scenes of those published articles that we have to read in class. Um, and we'll, we'll touch upon it again on the next slide. But um, with Wharton also offers like summer research opportunities where they'll give you money to go to a different country and do your own research, which is amazing and incredible and something that I wish I could have taken advantage of. But maybe Emily, you'll I'll do it vicariously through you if you ever end up doing it. Uh, so yeah, so these are just sort of a couple examples of these opportunities that Wharton offers, again, outside of the classroom, hands on you're able to explore really whatever you are interested in, which is awesome. I don't know if you want to, I know you mentioned you were in one of the scholars programs, right? Yes, I'm in Joseph Wharton Scholars. Um, they actually all live together in another program community um, in a different building. Um, what's really great about it is that it's a really tight-knit community of Wharton students. So what's really great is last semester, my first semester at Penn, I took a business ethics class, and there are only 10 people in my class. Um, very much seminar style, which was really great. Um, my professor was actually a consultant for The Good Place. I don't know if anyone's seen it. It's one of my favorite shows. Um, so I was able to talk to him as a like little freshman, like <laughs> talking to him about The Good Place, which is really cool. Um, there's also a research project you do your senior year. Um, there's so many great resources to help you achieve this. Every week I get an email from the director of the program with all these different research opportunities and internship programs and different talks going on around campus. So it's a really great way to get to know students. I'm actually in an all JW class right now called Evaluating Evidence. And I love my class. They're a really, really great group of people. So there's really so many different ways for you to find your own little community at um, Wharton. And about the scholars program. So you mentioned Evaluating Evidence. And I, yes. oh, yeah, <laughs> I took the class. So some of the classes are offered specifically for students within those scholar programs, but if those classes don't get filled, you're allowed to take them too. So um, don't feel like you have to join a scholars program to take every class that you've ever wanted. There's usually um, a little bit of leeway in terms of getting other students in. I love that class though. That was an awesome class. Yeah, that's the one I'm actually taking now. <laughs> Um, so in terms of study abroad, to switch bases a little bit, um, there's really so many different opportunities to study abroad. Last year, about 24% of Wharton students um, studied abroad. Um, obviously, that this year, the number is close to zero. Um, however, in the coming years, and even in past years, it's been a super, super big part of Wharton. Um, in a traditional semester or summer, there's over 120 locations worldwide where you can study abroad. Um, so there's business locations, which are accredited to teach you the business classes um, for Wharton. There's also liberal arts and sciences location, which can help you fulfill those specific requirements. Wharton students can travel anywhere among these 120 locations. Um, there's also something called the Wharton International Program, or WIP. These are about seven to ten day trips that are half touristy, half learning about the country's economy. Um, you get to go visit different sites of companies. You can actually get about half a credit um, for this trip. There's also global modular courses, which are three to six days. And these can actually count towards your concentration. So what this is, is all semester you're taking a class, you're learning about a specific region, a specific topic. And at the end of the semester, you go on a trip to that country and you get to learn more about it really from on the ground, which is really, really cool. Um, I would love to do a WIP trip or a GMC trip um, sometime in my time at Wharton, so I'll keep you guys updated on how that goes. Michelle, I don't know if you've ever done one or one of your friends has. No, I haven't, but I did go abroad last, no, well, a year ago now, oh boy, um, and so I was in Barcelona, and it was a, a Wharton 
um, approved location. So I was actually able to take business courses that I could then apply to my business degree, which was awesome. But I also know friends who um, are in Wharton who went to London, which is a liberal arts and sciences location, and they were still totally fine in terms of credits. Wharton really, really wants to allow students to do whatever they want to do. So the transferring of credits is um, pretty seamless. I got, like, I took five classes, I got five credits. Um, and again, it's really easy to fit in on back on like our little curriculum circle. Um, those like extra electives that you have to take really make it easy to go abroad and take whatever classes that interest you. It doesn't have to be business. It doesn't have to be liberal arts and sciences. Um, so yeah, I definitely 100% recommend that. So I'm going to let Emily do this one because she's my favorite slide. Um, it's also the longest one, um, but it is my favorite. Um, so there's a lot to cover, so bear with us. First, we're going to talk a little bit about minors. So you can do an inter or inter-school minor. So that means you can do a minor within Wharton, a minor in the college, engineering, etc. About 26% of Wharton students actually pursue a minor, and normally this is about six to eight classes. I didn't mention this earlier, but I'm actually minoring in Hispanic studies. Um, so it's super doable. Um, in addition, dual degrees. Now my favorite part, as I've mentioned probably several times, um, I'm in the Huntsman program and about 30% of Wharton students are in a dual degree. So what this means is you literally graduate with two degrees, two pieces of physical paper, which my parents are thrilled about, um, not just two majors. So there's two different types of dual degrees, coordinated and uncoordinated. First, we're going to talk about coordinated. If anyone's interested in this specific program, feel free um, to type it in the chat. Um, so just to preface, all of these with all of these programs, you can concentrate in whatever you want in Wharton. They're normally about five and a half to six and a half credits a semester, and it's normally about 20 to 50 people, depending on the program. So the Huntsman program this year has 42 students. Um, there's a super strong alumni base. I love to talk about this. I have an app on my phone called Hunts Connect, which is essentially just LinkedIn for Huntsman students. So I just like message alumni all the time and see what they're up to, just to learn about what they're doing, try to figure out what I want to do because I have no idea. Um, and this is just for Huntsman students, which is really great. Um, they also all have dedicated advisors. Um, so they're really familiar with the curriculum and to help you fulfill all the requirements within your four degree, um, within your four years. Um, for all of these, you have to apply coming into. So when you fill out the Common App, it will prompt you and say, would you like to apply to a dual degree? If you click yes, it'll ask you to select a specific one. So for example, I selected Huntsman, and then I had to do an additional essay. And then at the end of my essay, it asked me if I weren't to get into the Huntsman program, what school I would like to be considered for. Um, so I selected Wharton and filled out the Wharton application. And we really, really do want to emphasize um, that Oh, so we really want to emphasize that if you apply to a dual degree, it does not hurt your chances at all for the other schools. There's actually a completely different admissions board. So the Huntsman program will, will review the Huntsman applications. If you're not accepted, you're moved to a different pile, completely different. Um, so we really do not want you to be scared about that at all. Um, for every program except for Huntsman, you can apply when you're here um, as a student at Penn. However, the acceptance rate is kind of based on the internal dropout rate, so we really, really don't encourage um, doing that. Um, now to get into the programs a little bit more, in addition to the degree you're getting at Wharton, the Hudson program is a Bachelor of Arts um, in International Studies in the college. Um, the Jerome Fisher program in Management Technology, or MNT, is a Bachelor of Science in Applied Sciences or Engineering. Um, NHCM is a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. This program is actually five years, not four. Um, the others are four years. And the Bachelor's program is also a Bachelor of Arts in Life Sciences. So as you can see, there's a lot going on here. Um, and then as for your uncoordinated dual degree, you design when you get here. It's not as streamlined. So for example, if I were in Wharton and I wanted to be a physics major in the college, I would apply um, through the college to get approval for that. It's not a streamlined, so it doesn't easily count, double count classes as well. So normally you're taking about six and a half to seven and a half credits a semester, which is a little bit more. Um, something I do like to emphasize is that I have older friends in Huntsman who are doing minors, two concentrations, super involved in lots of extracurriculars and have so much free time still. Um, so it's super doable. Sorry, I'm like out of breath. 
It's my favorite slide. <laughs> but super doable, super easy. I love everyone in Huntsman. I live with all of them. They're some of my best friends. And if you're interested, I strongly encourage you to look and see if any of these programs interest you. Michelle, if you have anything to add, feel free. I, I think I need some water. <laughs> The one thing I, I, I think you touched on this, but I definitely want to emphasize that it doesn't hurt your application at all to apply to these programs. So as Emily mentioned, you um, basically say like, this is what program I would apply to. You do an extra essay and then they give you the option of what's your secondary target school. So I actually applied to the Huntsman program and said Wharton as my secondary target school. Didn't get into Huntsman, but it's okay. Made my piece of it. And I'm still at Wharton. So um, they pass your application along, and it's totally blind. Wharton doesn't know that you applied. So um, if you're really if you're interested, I would say go for it. Uh, it's really uh, a pretty amazing opportunity. I think we have a question. Um, in coordinated dual degree programs, would you still be able to choose one or two concentrations at Wharton, or would it not fit within the schedule? Um, you can totally do more than one concentration. I have plenty of friends in Huntsman who are doing um, two concentrations. Are there any other questions? I know this is a big one. And any concentration, any questions about anything else that we've spoken about, we can take a minute um, and answer anything. No? All right, we'll move on. So I sort of mentioned this earlier, but the cohort system is basically this community that you immediately have upon entering Wharton. And you take Wharton 101 with uh, your cohort, and it's about 60 students. And so I really loved it because I didn't know that many people coming in. And you're like immediately thrown into um, this huge class of 60 kids. You do a project with them, so you get really, really close. Some of my best friends to date are part of my cohort and so you also there you have a cohort leader and a cohort a dedicated cohort academic advisor who um is great and it's only for you 60 students so they're usually pretty available but the cohort leader is usually an upperclassman who actually calls you over the summer and asks you anything that you need any questions that you might have we had a Warren ambassador who was from alabama and his first question was, what winter jacket do I need? Like, what do I need to bring? Um, so you really feel part of a community pretty fast. There's also extracurricular activities that you do. Um, so we have the cohort cup, which is, I guess, trying to be like the Harry Potter cup. But unfortunately, I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I know, I'm sorry. I don't really know <laughs> if it's totally the same, but... The way it works is you gain points for your cohort by doing um, certain activities throughout your first year. So, for example, there's a 5K that people participate in. Personally, I'm not a runner, so I didn't participate, but I'm pretty sure my cohort won the race. Um, and so you get points that way. There's also uh, cohort Thanksgiving, so usually the day or the night before um, Thanksgiving break, each cohort will rent out one of the classrooms and there's tons of food. Uh, it's just a really great time to like relax and chat with friends without um, like right before break. We also have, and we'll also talk um, talk a little bit about like Wharton traditions. But um, there's a like a gingerbread making competition that could get you points for your cohort. So it's really just a great way to quickly meet people, make some friends, see some familiar faces in other classes. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to add anything, Emily. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I was super close with my cohort, especially having last semester being entirely virtual as a freshman in a completely new school, and I didn't know anyone going in. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to make that dark, but my cohort was super, yeah. super helpful. Um, I made so many great friends, and there's always different Zoom events going on to get to know each other. It was always so great seeing them in Wharton 101 when we just like won a certain event, my part, my cohort was super competitive. Um, so I think there's so many like great aspects of the cohorts, especially um, this past year. So I really could not have asked for a better experience. Very heartwarming. Um, so in terms of clubs, there's over 40 Wharton clubs and 400 Penn clubs. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm in Wharton Ambassadors, which is what this is, um, Wharton Women, so I'm actually doing pro bono consulting for a women's 
um, bookstore in West Philadelphia this semester to try and help them market themselves better, which is really cool. Um, I'm also involved in Greek Life and the Penn Surf Club. This is a funny story about the Penn Surf Club, is that my second week of school, I would went to the college um, club fair and the Wharton club fair. So Wharton clubs tend to be a little bit more pre-professional, help you get jobs. Penn clubs could literally be anything. I know there's a Quidditch club. Um, so really, it's so many different types of clubs. And I was worried I was doing too many pre-professional clubs. So I called my advisor. I was like kind of worried that I didn't like have any fun clubs, I guess, to do. So she's like, why don't why don't you just start one? Um, so I filled out a form to start the Penn Surf Club, and by the end of the day, it was approved. So it's the newest club on campus. Um, I met so many new friends. So really, if there's something that you don't particularly see interest in, you can literally start your own. We have over 50 members now, which is super awesome. So it's really everyone's super inviting, wanting to get involved, which is something I just love about Wharton. Um, in terms of mentorship opportunities, there's so many different types of mentorships. Michelle kind of talked about this earlier. There's more formal mentorship, so you can have a peer mentorship to your cohorts, um, an alumni mentorship, which you can apply to as a sophomore, and an MBA mentorship that you can apply to as a junior. Personally, my peer mentor in Wharton has been super helpful, especially navigating college through a pandemic. Um, she's one of my closest friends, actually, so I'm very um very lucky for that. Um, there's also more informal mentorship, which is more people helping each other out because they were helped out. So I know a lot of people in Wharton Ambassadors are always texting in the group chat asking about certain clubs or certain professors, which is really cool. So it's essentially like the pay it forward concept. Um, to switch gears a little bit in terms of the case competitions, there's really so many of them, both nationally and globally, that a lot of Wharton students go to. Um, so many great Wharton traditions like the cohort run, cohort Thanksgiving, winter Wharton land, Hauntsman Halloween. There's a lot of puns, um, which is really cool. And we were able to do them all virtually this year, which was also really, really great. Um, in terms of the Wharton Leadership Ventures, or WLV, they're about one to 14 day trips where you learn leadership outside of the classroom. So people have gone rock climbing, whitewater rafting. People I know have actually gone to Antarctica. So the whole point of this is just to show the importance of teamwork and what it means to be in a team. So there's so many great opportunities to get involved in student life. Michelle, if you want to talk about any of your experiences. Uh, no, I think you covered it pretty well. Um, it, it's really incredible how many opportunities we're in and Penn in general gives you to explore anything and everything. I'm incredibly impressed you started the surfing club. That's so awesome. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and in terms of mentorship programs, Emily, you touched on this, but uh, the pay it forward concept is really palpable within Wharton. Um, I'll talk about this on the next slide, but in terms of like recruiting and stuff, alumni are always, always, always welcome to or willing to help out and answer any questions you might have um, because somebody did that for them. And even within um, like undergraduate, I'm when I was a freshman, I had sophomores, juniors, and seniors helping me out do everything. Now that I'm a senior, um, I ask my fellow seniors <laughs> and also juniors and sophomores who may have taken classes. So definitely a very collaborative environment um, that sort of lets you grow and do take whatever path you want to take, which is awesome. So, ooh, oh no, good, sorry, I thought it went to the next slide. Um, this slide is a lot more interesting usually for the parents, but we're gonna sort of talk about um, how we're in helps you in terms of career, deciding what to do, what path to take, how to get there. So career counseling, it has, Wharton actually has their own, um, like our, our own wing of the career counseling building, but um, so it's just for us and they have some really cool resources for you. So you can take, uh, you can send your resume, your cover letter, and they'll edit it or like make suggestions, send it back within 24 hours, which has been really helpful for me when I'm trying to figure out how to write a cover letter or what to put in my resume. Um, they also have uh, like dedicated advisors. So I actually, my freshman year, when I was sort of deciding what I wanted to do, I called them and I was like, I like these are my interests. I'm not sure like what careers would be best for me. Um, and then on-campus recruiting and career fairs. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. So what's really amazing about Wharton is that uh, employers want 
Wharton students. So they'll come to campus and hold info sessions, they'll hold interviews, they'll have career fairs where we have hundreds and hundreds of companies coming and you just get to network, um, which is really, really awesome. I uh, actually like in between classes would like put on a suit, like go do a 15 minute coffee chat and then go back to class. So it's really amazing that they're coming to campus and sort of saving us that airfare or train ride or like stress of walking into like a corporate building for the first time. Um, so that's really incredible and um, something that I definitely really appreciate um, and is I pretty unique to Wharton. We also have the Handshake Recruiting Platform, which is essentially, it's like, it, it gives you like employment opportunities. So it'll, you can choose like, I'm interested in whatever you want. So say you want like banking in New York and I want it to be like a startup or like less than X amount of employees. And then you'll get notifications of like this job that fills your criteria is offering an internship like here's where you apply and like what's also amazing is that they have an option where you just do like okay like resume drop and it just sends your resume you don't even have to do anything you don't have to go on the website so that's also amazing a really really great resource one of my favorite resources though is my pen which is our alumni network um like a database basically so Every human being, basically, <laughs> that's alive and graduated from Wharton is on this database. And you, again, can, um, like, sort or, like, filter through depending on what you want. So you can say, like, at this firm, was in this club, and, like, did this on campus and was concentrating in this. And then it gives you, like, X amount of people. And that just, it makes it really helpful for when you're cold emailing or trying to make a connection with someone, it's a lot better to be like, oh, hi, like, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm studying this at Wharton. I was also in, like, Wharton Ambassadors. Would love to chat with you about X, Y, and Z. And, again, like so we were saying about the paying it forward, usually everyone is so willing to help out and turn around and do whatever they can for another person because someone older than them did it for them when they were in those shoes. So, yeah. I don't know, Emily, if you want to add to anything. Yeah, I've actually, like, a few weeks ago, I had a meeting with career counseling just to have them go over my resume. I had my high school resume, but didn't really know what it was supposed to look like when I was in college. Um, I had some free time, so I just kind of called them up and had them walk me through what it should like, look like when I was in college. So now if I want to apply to a program or even next year, I have an up-to-date resume. Even as a freshman, there's really great opportunities to make use of all of these different um, counseling services offered at Wharton. So your degree at Wharton really opens you to so many different doors. Like I mentioned earlier, it's not just about finance and consulting, but you can work at companies like NASA or Facebook, um, which is really, really awesome. I personally have a friend who's graduating. They're actually working at eBay um, when they graduate. Michelle, I'm sure you have so many friends that are working at so many different cool companies. Um, actually, a NASA astronaut graduated from Wharton. He actually went to the space station. Um, Warby Parker were MBA grads here. So really, there's so many different places and opportunities you can go to. I have friends that are actually pre-med in Wharton, so they want to go to med school, other students who are pre-law. So really, your Wharton um, degree opens you to so many different doors. Yeah, I would echo everything that you said. My friends in Wharton are ending up everywhere. Like We have the classic financial side, consulting, banking, whatever. But again, then also, I have a friend going into the music industry, into the film industry. Um, I have some friends who are doing startup. So it's really whatever you want to do with your degree. It's up to you and your choice. And again, linking it back to that toolbox, you have the skills and the resources that you need to excel in whatever you decide to do. So this is a quick little snapshot of um, what the undergraduate program at Warren is made up of. So we're about 2,500 2, students, uh, which equals out to about a little bit more than 600 students per um, year, per grade. <laughs> um, so 30% pursue more than one degree, 24% study abroad, 26% pursue minors, and there's over 200 varsity athletes. 
So you really have this flexibility to pursue whatever you want to do. I have friends who are athletes who are captains of the lacrosse team, of the football team, and they have like rarely ever feel overwhelmed. Um, they have a lot of resources available to them if they do. Um, so it's really, again, whatever you want to do, you can really do it. So in terms of the class breakdown for the class of 2023, there's normally about 500 to 550 students, um, only including coordinated, not uncoordinated dual degree students. Um, the class of 2023 was 43% women, 24% international hailing from 42 countries. Um, like I mentioned earlier in my Wharton 101 class, we worked with Penn Leads the Vote to increase graduate student voter turnout. And someone on my team was from South Africa. So it was super interesting having his input on an American election. Um, and he actually was a huge facet to the team. He talked about all different ways to get international students involved to create almost a culture of voting, um, which is something that was really, really unique. So the international students really um, are a huge resource of information from life outside of the United States, which truly I love. People on my floor from Nigeria, Botswana, South Korea, Mexico, really all over. And I love talking to them, hearing about their lives. So it really is also has such a great international culture here. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. I think one of the coolest things um, about Warren is hearing like different perspectives from people who grew up in different places with different backgrounds, different beliefs, and sort of seeing how that plays into how they think about the world and what they see through their own lens. Um, and sort of like you're saying, my neighbors in my house right now are from Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, London, Pittsburgh. <laughs> like, it's uh, really awesome just being able to meet all these people all over the world and now having friends in every part of the, everywhere of the world um, and being, I don't know, just being able to make those connections is really, really awesome. So with that, this brings us to the end of the presentation. They, these are some resources you guys can go to if you have any additional questions. So the undergrad wharton.upenn.edu is sort of more detailed information about um, the undergraduate degree. Admissions also, um, there's a link for admissions information. There's uh, the Business Journal for High School Students, so sort of a student perspective on um, what's going on in Wharton. And then that right there, the ambassadors at wharton.upenn.edu is our club email. So if you guys have any additional questions at all, please, please, please feel free to email that email right there and we will um, get you to speak to somebody who has experience with whatever that is. So, and obviously our Instagram and our Twitter, if you guys want to follow us, we appreciate every follow. Um, but with that, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask them um, or head out. I wish we could be in person right now, but hopefully we'll see you around soon. Thanks, guys. I just put my email in the chat if anyone has questions as well. Let me see. Do you mind putting my email in too? It's mmato at warren.upen.edu. So one of the questions is, can you talk about Greek life and what the rush process looks like and how that works? So, um, yeah, Greek life is a really great way to find um, another community, which is really, um, like, I've found some of my really cl close friends, been able to sort of, like, expand my um, communities that way. You rush in second semester, which I personally really appreciate because you have time to sort of get your bearings meet some people, and then go through the rush process. But um, in terms of, like, social life, um, you don't have to be in Greek life to have a social life or go out or meet new people. At most clubs um, are very, very social. So even we're in ambassadors, we have, like, a formal, and we do a lot of dinners together. Um, and most clubs are like that. There's also a bunch of school events, um, like going to Reading Terminal and things like that. So... You don't have to feel any pressure to join Greek life um, for that social life aspect. You can find that um, in hundreds of other places. Um, what would you say is your biggest takeaway from years at Penn and Wharton? Wow, okay, we're getting deep. My biggest takeaway would probably be the people that I've met are truly just incredible human beings. Um, 
some of the smartest people, some of my closest friends. Um, it's sort of, it's really incredible looking here in the classroom and thinking like these people are going to be running the world one day and I cannot wait to see it happen. Um, so that's definitely one of my biggest takeaways is just sort of this network that um, you get to be a part of and this incredible community and just sort of this cal the caliber of students that we're in um, accepts is exceptional because you get all these different perspectives and all of these different ideas um, and you really learn a lot from your peers not obviously more so than your professors but it's definitely up there so yeah wow that made me sad that I'm graduating but I don't know Emily if you want to add to anything that you've learned so far yeah you kind of you kind of nailed that I always say I live with everyone in Huntsman and they are my best friends they're the coolest people I've ever met and I love them all to death um I've like loved all the friends I've met like you said earlier and even on zoom in a pandemic year as a freshman I feel like everything you said really resonated with me I actually got the chills um so it would be 100 percent glad to hear it uh are there any other questions Um, how does the dorming process work freshman year? Um, I can talk about this one because I did it um, pretty recently. So essentially, you can choose to pick a roommate. You can go random, really whatever you want. There's so many different um, dorm, I guess, dorm buildings you can live in. Um, so Michelle and I lived in different dorms. I'm in King's Court. Michelle's in the quad. I think about half of undergrad or freshmen live in the quad their freshman year. Normally, the housing form comes out, I think, like April, like early April, um, and you can pick which building you want, you can go random, and then you find out, I think, June, who your roommate, right? June, your roommate, and then you move in um, around late August. Any other questions? Michelle, do you want to add on to that? No, 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 you, you covered it perfectly. I'm not sure if there are any other questions or um, we can wait around for another like 30 seconds, any last minute. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming on a late Monday night. Um, good luck with everything. Hope everybody's healthy and safe. Hopefully this pandemic will be over soon and we can meet in person one day, but till then. Bye guys.